friends, welcome to Wonderful Word Wednesday. I'm Barb Nemechek. Hello everyone, I am Jim Nemechek. And Barbara, I notice we have our board game theme back in front of us. Uh, this one happens to be Connect Four. Uh, I have to tell you, in my number of years, I've, I've never played this game. Uh, so uh, curious how we're going to use it in our Bible message. Well, our theme for Wonderful Word Wednesday this week is Connections. Let's say we just got a new TV and we wanted to go in a certain spot in our room, but the TV power cord only goes so far and the outlet is 10 feet away from this wall. Is there anything we can use to help us to watch TV without having to move the TV to another location? Uh, that was poor planning on our part. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, of course, I mean, we can use an extension cord. The extension cord is really useful for bridging that gap between the electronics device and what is now an inconveniently placed electrical outlet. Uh, if it's not connected to the outlet, of course, there is no power. And without that uh, extension cord, there's no way to connect it to that power. From a fire safety standpoint, if you're using electric uh, extension cords, please be sure to use the proper one because not all cords are created equal. Mm -hmm, that's true. We all know people who we'd like to invite to know God more. They need to know God in their lives. And God is counting on us to tell them. In a way, you are like an extension cord that can bridge the gap between the people and God. Now, Jesus sent his followers into the world to connect people to him. One by one, one person at a time, those connections were made. One-on-one -on -one connections played a part in how you and your family and we and our families came to be Christians. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, someone in the distant past or maybe more recent past told your family about Jesus. Now, that calling comes to all of us. We need to begin by connecting ourselves to God so his power can dwell in us. Then, like an extension cord, we can connect our families, our friends, and the world around us to Jesus. Shifting a little bit, computers today are designed to be as easy to use as possible. But the early computers could definitely be complicated and confusing. That's why computer manufacturers created tech support centers, places that you could call when you had a problem or a question. Tech support centers are valuable help to lots of people who have very real problems with their computers. But for every real problem that gets called into tech support, they do get other calls that border the ridiculous. <laughs> For example, one lady called tech support to complain that the foot pedal on her computer was not working. The tech support agent told her that her computer did not have a foot pedal, but the lady told him it did. It was just like the one on her sewing machine, except it was round with two buttons on top and a little ball on the bottom. Can you guess what it was? Yes, of course, it was the computer mouse. <clears throat> Another example, a person called in to the tech support company asking them to fix the drink holder on his computer. The tech support agent told him that the computer did not have a drink holder. Yes, it does, the man insisted. I push a button and it pops out of the machine. Only it broke off and I need to get it replaced. The tech support agent asked the man to look at the tray and to read to him what it said at the end of the tray. And it said these letters, C D R O M. His drink holder was really the CD ROM drive. Many people call in and say they can't get the machine to come on or do anything at all. The machine's not starting, it's not working, it's not doing anything. And when they do, 
The tech support agents always start with one question. Is the computer plugged in? It seems like a silly question, but guess what? Tech support agents have been taking these calls for long enough to know that a lot of people do forget to simply plug in the computer. And if you're not connected to power, the computer will not run. Today's theme is Connect 4. You don't have to plug a Connect 4 game into the wall to play. But if you want to win, you have to connect four pieces in a row of the same color. We want to challenge you to make a similar connection in your own life. We want to challenge you to help the people in your life connect to Jesus. Let's tell a story about a man named Philip. Philip was one of Jesus' disciples, and he was the very first to connect someone to Jesus. And that story Barbara's referring to is found in John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. And it begins. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. The passage continues. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were sitting under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. Then he added, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Here ends this passage. The Bible tells us that Jesus is God's Son, that Jesus died for our sins so he could offer us a new life. He sent his Holy Spirit to dwell with us so that we could live for him. With Christ in our hearts, we can face any challenge, any hardship that life brings. But unless we are connected to God, we are on our own. And no one gets connected to God unless someone helps him to connect. As you heard from the Bible passage, after meeting Jesus, Philip went straight to his friend, Nathaniel. He was so excited about knowing Jesus he wanted his best friend to know him as well. That's the kind of enthusiasm God wants us to have in connecting others to Jesus. There are four connections we need to make. First, we need to connect ourselves to Jesus. We need to accept him as our savior and commit ourselves to following him. Jesus tells us, unless we make that connection, we can do nothing to connect others. We know this because in John chapter 15, verse 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Here ends the verse. Second, we need to connect our families. <clears throat> Most people go to church with their family. Which means, the prob yeah. which means the family is probably connected to Jesus. Sorry, rent the teeth. Uh, we can do other things as well to keep our family connected, besides attending church. We can pray together at meals and at other times in the day. And you can certainly share a Bible study together as well. Our third thing that we need to connect is our friends. 
We can connect them by sharing our faith with them. We can connect them by inviting them to church or church activities. Most importantly, we need to show them with our lives in action that our faith is real by living differently. We need to say no to sin, avoid gossip, and look for ways to serve others. Then, just like Philip, we invite our friends to meet Jesus. And finally, in this list of Connect Four, we need to connect our world to Jesus. Before returning to his Father, Jesus gave us all the Great Commission. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, that says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Here ends this reading. We can connect our world by living out our faith. We can connect our world by serving with our hands. We can take mission trips. We can do service projects. We can witness to those who will listen. Now, Philip spent the rest of his life connecting people. The book of Acts tells several stories of Philip connecting total strangers to Jesus, from people in Samaria to those in Ethiopia. Philip was ready to connect people to Jesus anytime God gave him the opportunity. God wants us to have that same willing heart to do likewise. Remember, connecting others to Christ begins with connecting ourselves. Once we are connected, we can connect our families, our friends, and our world. Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit so that we could continue the work. He began connecting people to him one person at a time. Which brings us to our challenge for this week. <laughs> Excuse me, for those of you watching as well as ourselves, examine our lives and determine how do we connect with Jesus, our family, our friends, and the larger world? Do we live our lives in such a way that others will see Jesus in and through us? Are we lacking perhaps in one of those four? And if so, what could we do to improve that aspect? Our faith in action is something we need to work at, something we need to refine and retool as we move along our earthly journey of this life. And let us now move to end in a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for placing people in our lives who connected us to Jesus. Help us to connect the people we love to Jesus so they can know you as their savior. Guide us to let our light shine that all people will see your goodness, love, and power shining through what they witness in us. You may add your personal intentions at this moment. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching again on a weekly basis, or if you're just tuning in for the first time, thanks for coming. Uh, again, Wonderful Word Wednesday, available on the church's Facebook and YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. Until next week, bye all. Bye. Happy Halloween.